Hello and welcome to a brand new Old School RuneScape video. You guys have been asking me to make a Nightmare Zone Guide video pretty much since I made this account. This account here is only about 6 months old and we're ready max combat. We're about to max range. I think I'll get that later today. We're only 2 days off 99 range. I found an awesome efficient way to train mage in Nightmare Zone. I've actually managed to train from 30 to 70 construction via Nightmare Zone, which doesn't make sense, but don't worry, I'll explain that. And we also managed to train up to 81 Slayer in Nightmare Zone. So, pretty cool methods, and I should have really made a guide for this ages ago, but anyway, I'm going to go through all that in this video. We also made 50 mil profit already from Nightmare Zone, which is pretty crazy. And did I mention it's 20 minutes AFK? That means you don't actually have to sit at your computer, you can watch Netflix, you can play in alt accounts, you can just chill out, do whatever you want. Whilst getting profit, whilst getting stats and whilst getting a pretty juicy looking account here. So we'll start off with the long bones. So we're going to start off with construction and they'll tell you about Slayer because they're the two weirdest ones, the ones people don't really know about. So to train construction in Nightmare Zone, basically what you want is to have monsters that drop big bones. Any monster that drops big bones has a chance of dropping long bones. And you're probably thinking if I'm AFK in Nightmare Zone, these here will just disappear, I'll not notice them on the floor. You can highlight them with rune lights so they always show up and these do not disappear in Nightmare Zone. I don't know why, but every time I look over they're still there. The big bones have disappeared from underneath them, but these things must stay there on the floor for like 10-15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes, I don't know, but they're always there so don't worry about missing them. As long as you have them highlighted with rune light, these show up on the floor for me as like bright purple. And these here give 4.5k construction XP for every single one. Hello Drunken Dwarf, give us a pint, good lad. Anyway, these here things give 4.5k construction XP for every single one, which adds up loads. Like, I've trained all the way up to 70 construction from 30 with just long bones. I'll show a wee clip of me handing in these long bones, it's quite nice. Pretty satisfying anyway uh what else slayer no 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 they also drop curve bones and i'll tell you which monsters drop long bones here so the best possible one is the skeleton hellhound from in search of murkine quest that's the one over in mortania it's a pretty easy quest to do and it's one of the best monsters you can have on in nightmare zone it's only 55 hp in a normal rumble so you can kill it really fast and it drops big bones, which means it has the chance of dropping these, like 1 in 400. If you cycle, so what I mean by cycle is have a couple of low HP monsters that you can kill really quick. Either Trap Soul from Ascent of Arceus, Count Runner from Vamp Slayer. They're, they're both like 30 HP, you kill them in seconds. Sand Snake's a bit high in the HP. King Roland, another really good one you can cycle with. Kendall actually has defensive stats. Kendall is really strange. Loads of people say it's a really good Nightmare Zone monster, but you'll actually have 5 to 7% lower dps no matter what gear you're in by having him on so he'll actually lower your xp per hour quite a bit even though he's a really easy monster he doesn't deal much damage to you if you can avoid him if you can have either king roland or me on instead of kendall it'll boost your xp per hour this applies to normal rumble it applies to hard rumble he's just one of the only quest monsters that actually has defensive stats all the rest have zeros but they have a couple of defensive levels not stats it's quite different it's like the difference between wearing gear and having defensive bonuses versus having levels. So yeah, he's a bit of a tank. Try to avoid him if possible. Anyway, I was showing you the long bone droppers. This one's the best one. It doesn't attack with any special abilities. It only uses melee. You don't need to have tanky gear on for it. It's the best one you can have on. Two trolls are really good. You can even do these during slayer tasks, which I'll get into in a second. But Dad Monster, he hits you back a wee bit, which kind of sucks. You lose one out of every like five attacks. He attacks really slow, but he also gets 5% bonus XP for killing him. And he drops big bones, which means curved bones and long bones, all that kind of stuff. Very good monster to have on if you want to get construction XP. Another one's Arg. Now, I'd only turn Arg on if you have high gear and high defense, maybe like 85 pluses or maybe even 90 plus defense. But Arg throws these like range attacks with you that hit quite high if you don't have decent range defense but she also drops big bones long bones curve bones all that kind of stuff so really good for construction xp there's one other one here but this one is only for if you're training melee you cannot fight this monster with range or mage because she has plus well he it's the one from holy grail the black knight titan this one here is plus 1000 range and mage defense so you want to avoid it if you're training with major range but basically there's what your setup will look like. You'll turn off all these here low level ones. 
leave on a couple to cycle and then you just have four big bone droppers which means four chances of getting long bones and curved bones which means loads of construction xp and you'll kill the trap soul in seconds that's the best setup there you'll get nearly two big bones per hour by killing 400 of these if you're maxed if you're a bit lower stats you'll probably get one of these per hour but it takes like 400 hours to max so that means you can possibly get 400 long bones if you have these ones on maybe even more actually because i didn't have these on all the time i like to be in a wee bit more fk so sometimes i took these off to take less damage and i still managed to get 700k construction xp so yeah that's construction explained pretty much you will get loads of curved bones loads of long bones they don't disappear you just pick them up and then you hand them in in dorgashin over in the goblin city <coughs> and that there will give you a load of construction xp what else do I want to show you? Yeah, Slayer. Right, so Slayer is really weird and it's hard to explain and you cannot do this if you've already completed a load of quests. This is for if you're making an alt or if you're just starting RuneScape. If you haven't started Dragon Slayer, this is quite complicated, but I'm going to explain it anyway because I know you guys are really interested in it. I trained up to 81 Slayer in Nightmare Zone and the way I done it was by not starting Dragon Slayer, which sounds pretty crazy. Most people think, oh, let's blast out a load of quests early on. It'll make everything much easier. But Slayer is the one thing that it makes really, not difficult, it just makes it that you have to train Slayer the conventional, the old way. But let's say you just want to train your Slayer in Nightmare Zone. There is a way to do that and how that is, is to take Neve, the Slayer Master. So you need to have 85 combat and a couple of Slayer points built up to start this method. But Neve basically has about 40 tasks she can assign. You can check them all here in her wiki. But loads of them have either Slayer requirements, you need to be high Slayer level to attack them. Or they have requirements in quests so it goes down if you don't have high slayer from being about 40 to about 20 but then if you don't complete dragon slayer that wipes out another like 12 of them because you can't get assigned green dragons blue dragons red dragons black dragons any of the metal dragons or anything related to dragon slayer too like adamant even the higher level ones so it goes the whole way down to like nine slayer monsters neve can assign then you block a couple because you can block slayer masters if you have a couple of quest points and then you can skip the ones you don't like. So you can go down from having a possible pool of Slayer monsters of about 40 to 9. And then you can drop it down to nearly 5 if you complete a couple of quests. And then from those 5, there's 2 you can do in Nightmare Zone. So that is Black Demons and Trolls. You can complete every single Trolls and Black Demon task in Nightmare Zone. And then you can have either an option of boosting a load of Slayer points before you do Slayer in the Wild or whatever. You know, you do one day of Wildly Slayer and that'll boost you a load of Slayer points. And then you can skip all those tasks that aren't Nightmare Zone related. Or you can tick the two easy ones, which is Calphites and Ankus, and just cannon them. Just complete them really fast. If you go into Calphite Worker's Room and cannon there, it's just insanely quick. You do the whole task in 5 to 10 minutes if you use like those bracelets that boost the speed of your Slayer task. They like skip a wee bit. I'll put on the screen there what they do. But you have the option between doing Calphites and Ankus and boosting. And then you're completing 4 out of 5 tasks and skipping 1, which means... Well, later on when you've higher Slayer level, you'll actually have to skip two or three. Whenever you unlock like Blood Veils at 50 Slayer, Basilisks, you don't actually because you have to unlock them. But yeah, you know what I mean? It might go up to five or six. You might have to block a few, but at the start, you'll have one skip task, four that you complete, two of those AFK and Nightmare Zone, and two that are really fast. And then you're completing consistent tasks of Slayer in Nightmare Zone. So you're getting Slayer XP in Nightmare Zone AFK for 20 minutes, which means you can just boost your Slayer level so high with no effort like afk for 20 minutes i'm going to get into how you afk for 20 minutes now in a second but yeah slayer in nightmare zone is just so chill so fk i really recommend trying it out if you're making an alt just don't complete any of these quests just go in the wiki and have a look at what kind of requirements there are in some of these it's like elemental workshop if you don't complete that you can't get wyverns that also needs dragon slayer so you can actually complete it if you want Rune Dragons, Dragons, uh, them need really high Slayer. Right, there we go, that there is Construction XP and Nightmare Zone explained. Slayer XP and Nightmare Zone explained. Now I'm gonna go into like how to AFK. Some of you might already know this, but there is a few points I've found along the way of spending so much time here that you'll really like. So first off, Mage. Loads of the monsters in here are level one magic or very low Mage defense, because Mage defense is actually 70% calculated from your magic level and only 30% from your defense level, that's how it works it out. So say you're level 1 magic and you're level 99 defense, you'll really only be 30 magic defense, that's how it's rolled, along with a bit of magic defense stats, you know, but most monsters don't have that, so you don't need to worry about that. One thing to note here is Kendall 
actually has negative magic defense. So if you're training mage in Nightmare Zone, you can make it as AFK as splashing. So 20 minutes AFK without having to touch your computer whilst being able to cast a higher magic spell than your level. I've messed up here, I'm actually an ancient, so I'm just gonna go and change that one sec. Right, so what makes magic really, really good to train here compared to like splashing or training in most other places is first off, it covers a bit of your cost with the points you make, the reward, reward points you can turn into her boxes, which means you get a bit of your runes back, but you can also deal damage here. If you're splashing, you deal zero damage, so you get about 40% more XP, whilst being still 20 minutes AFK, keep that in mind. So what I was saying about the magic defense means you can wear melee gear, you can be fully AFK. I would go for the damage boosting gear, like an occult, or maybe the tormented bracelet, or anything else that boosts your damage a wee bit, but I would go mostly melee or mostly tank gear because you don't need much, like, positive mage offense here i'm plus seven and i'll still hit like a train but these potions make it pretty insane so say you want to splash or cast a fire wave anywhere else in the game you need to be level 75 but these here potions can boost you up to up to 19 at the high levels lower levels it's only about 16 but that means you'll be boosted in your magic level for 16 minutes if you use the preserve prayer it actually boosts you for 50% longer, so over 20 minutes boosted magic level. So you come here below, you hit 75 mage or whatever you want for fire wave, or say it's even fire bolt or fire blast, depending if you're using death runes, chaos runes, or blood or wrath runes, whatever. You can boost your magic level up massively. You can put preserve prayer on, which drains really slow, and then you can cast a higher fire wave. And look at this, it'll just barely miss, even though I'm only plus seven magic, it'll just completely hit like a train, even though I'm in melee gear. And because I'm like 1000 hit points at the moment, I'm actually not. So you come in here, you drink up your absorption potions, you have low level melee monsters on, they're all pretty low, they're not gonna deal much damage. I'd usually not have this boy on because he actually deals more damage than some at higher combat levels like General Kazard. He's actually stronger than he looks for level 101. Even the 112, the General Kazard, deals lower damage than him. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. You come in here, you boost up your levels, and you can cast a higher level spell for a good few minutes whilst AFK in, which makes this boost your magic potential or your magic XP potential. You know, say outside here, you might only get 40k XP per hour training, or you could burst or something that's really expensive and get much higher. But if you want to AFK and chill for 20 minutes, whilst getting crazy XP rates, like about 80k XP I was getting here with Fire Wave. With these Wrath Runes though, I'm probably getting like 90k. Let me just check this actually. So I don't have the best magic gear, don't be expecting anything too crazy. But I'll just reset this here and then I'll speed up and show you what we're getting in five minutes. Right, it's just been about a minute and it's already up to 88k XP per hour. So I'd say it'll probably even out about 90, maybe 92k XP per hour. But remember this here is 20 minutes AFK. You drink all your absorption potions, you have over 1000 HP and these monsters in full melee tankish gear will not hit you down in 20 minutes. You can chill here, train in magic, get 90k XP per hour without any effort, with no clicks. If you're barraging, you're spending a load of money, or bursting, you keep having to move around to get them lured and all, it's a lot of effort. This way you can get 99 magic extremely easy while you watch movies, you chill, you watch Netflix, and it's the same for every other skill. But I just wanted to emphasize, when you're training mage, you do not need to wear mage armor in here, and it's almost beneficial not to wear full mage armor. Even if you have like ancestral top and bottoms or something for the damage boost, I'd still go with a tanky hem, tanky boots, stuff that doesn't boost the damage. Go for the defense bonus over the mage bonus. Right, we'll switch over to range. Range is pretty self-explanatory. It already has some defense bonuses, not as high as melee. So you could just wear your best offensive range gear and you'd be fine. You don't need to wear melee gear because most of these monsters are quite low level. You'll notice in this rumble I've got some higher monsters on. These are all the low ones. Sand Snake is an awesome monster. He's got like 55, I think he's got 60 HP. What does it tell you here? Yeah, 60 HP and he's only level 36. He's like a sand crab in Nightmare Zone. One of the best ones you can turn on. You'll notice in my ones, I have like Bouncer on, who's a really high level. I would not have him at a low level because he completely rips you to pieces until you're like 60 or 70 defense. But loads of people turn him on because he's more points. And whenever you have higher defense, I would turn him on just because it means you get more points per hour and more points means more profit. So how much money per hour is this? Like is Nightmare Zone? On normal rumble it's not loads but you need to think you're in here for like hundreds of hours. One point at the moment if you're spending it in herb boxes every day is worth 1.36 GP. So at the minute I'm over 100k XP per hour and you have to think I was just messing about with mage there. 
Now I'm doing a wee bit of range, that's much lower than what you'd normally get. Once you're high stats, you'll be getting about 150k points per hour. If you have loads of melee monsters turned on in a normal rumble, in a hard rumble you can get this up to like 1.5 million points per hour if you're paying attention, doing that 1 HP DH and all. So in Nightmare Zone you can actually get 2 mil profit per hour whilst getting loads of XP per hour which is pretty cool. It will take you a few days to cash out all of those herb boxes though, you can't like cash it out instantly so I'd say while you train here just every day collect your herb boxes because it's much lower profit to use the other rewards. I'll show you in the box here after this. Right so we've covered all the cool stuff but I want to make this pretty much an all-in-one guide so the final thing I want to talk about is the reward chest here. For anybody who's coming here and it's your first ever time in Nightmare Zone you've just completed your five quests. I'll put a link in the description for the Nightmare Zone wiki so you can see what five quests you want to complete. Basically just go for five low level melee monsters to get you started. You come over here and in your first run you go in here and kill a few of the monsters with either food or prayer and normal potions and then you come over to the reward box just after completing your first run. First thing you want to buy is absorption potions. Each sip of these is 50% HP and they stack so then you can use these in the nightmare zone to boost your HP up to 1000 which means monsters will not kill you within that 20 minutes. You can also buy your overloads in here but I'd do that in the second run after you've made more points you know. Exorptions are what you want to get to start you off. You can also buy your super magic in here if you're using that magic training method where you can cast the higher level spells at a lower level and you can get super range in here. If you're AFK and hard like you're watching a movie or something do not use overloads just use these here like super range and potions super magic potions or super attack and strength because these only last five minutes whereas the other ones last like you know 15 minutes if you put preserve on 20 minutes plus boosted so if you're a complete afk don't use these if you're paying attention you can click every five minutes these are awesome they're a load of xp that covers that upgrades is where you upgrade your rings to give them double stats berserker ring warrior ring archer ring all that kind of stuff resources is where you get your herb boxes every day and these here, I've already bought mine, but every single box costs 950 points and it gives you 10 herbs. So that there's where you get all your money from. You can only buy 15 per day. So yeah, you just want to do that every single day. It'll give you loads of money and it adds up over time. If you want to cash out really quick for cheaper, for like four times cheaper, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I'd recommend just doing herb boxes. But you can buy cheaper stuff here and you can see how much profit per item. I'll put a link to this Alchemate site in the description that tells you how much profit you can get from every single thing in here. The last thing I want to say before we finish this up is redirection scrolls are absolutely awesome. I didn't know about these till the other day and I was using a lure or a liar, whatever you call it from the from Ink and Isles quest liar. to teleport to Relica to do Vorkaf runs. But if you use scrolls of direction, redirection that you can buy here for Nightmare Zone points, on house teleports you can change them to teleport to any of these locations. So Edgar's Ruse is awesome for like God Wars dungeons if you're doing any trips out to Bandos or Zami or anything like that. Insane to have that teleport. Yinal, I don't know if there's any good uses for that. But the best one here is Relica for Vorkaf's awesome. I'm sure some of these are awesome for like herb runs and Polnavinch if you're doing agility in the desert or maybe for a KQ or something like that. Nah I don't think that'd be as close. Anyway. Loads and loads of different teleports I didn't even know were in the game are accessible with these here scrolls of redirection so they are class definitely check them out later on. I think we've covered everything about Nightmare Zone in this video. The main ones I wanted to tell you about was definitely the Slayer and the Construction XP because it's just such a clicky skill and such an expensive skill to train. If you can get 1 mil XP out of the way before you've even started training it just by AFK in here getting your stats up definitely worth looking into and it doesn't even make your XP slower than using the other bosses. What the hell, 19 minutes, how is this so long? I didn't know we'd been slobbering on for so long. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna end this one here, definitely. I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy, bye.